What's up, everybody? It's your boy 722 Marine here. Uh, once again, I know it's been a long time since I made a video, but I'm going to dive right back into it. This video is called One is Pentecostal Exposed Part 8. Uh, um, I'm attacking the idea that Jesus is the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And this evening, I will be coming from Colossians chapter 1, verses 12 through 19. Colossians 1, starting at verse 12. Giving thanks unto the Father which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who had delivered us from the power of darkness and have translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. Verse 16. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things and by him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. So we clearly see from uh, that the Father, what the Father did. He translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son. He gave us, you know, he redeemed us through his blood and even, even the forgiveness of sins. And we see that the Son is the, the image of the invisible God. The Son is the firstborn of every creature. Verse 16, for by him were all things created. All things were created by the Son that are in heaven, that are in earth. Verse 17, and he is before all things, and by him all things consist. He's talking about the Son. Verse 18, he's the head of the, the body, the church. Who is that? Jesus Christ, the Son, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead. Jesus Christ was the first to rise from the dead in the glorified, resurrected body, never to die again. That in all things he might have the preeminence. Verse 19. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. It pleased the Father that in the Son should all fullness dwell. So we see that the Son. The, uh, the, the main scripture that I'm trying to pull out is verse 16 and 17. That by him all things was created. By him and for him. By him all things consist. He is before all things and, and by him all things consist. Talking about the son. If he created all things, he has to be eternal. That means he is the creator. And it's another uh, scripture that support the scripture. See, I'm not I don't build an argument or a case on just one scripture. I let scripture interpret scripture. And I take the scripture, I take the word of God at face value. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1 and 2. God who at sundry times and diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he have appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. So we have two separate sets of two separate um, sets of passages that's talking about how the Father created all things by the Son. You can't refute that. Is the Scripture make a distinction between the Father and the Son? The Jesus didn't become the Son when he became a human, or else the Scripture would never say he made the worlds by the Son, because it would be impossible. It's the scriptures say he made the worlds by the Son, by whom he made the worlds. All things were created by him. And he is before all things. That's what the scriptures say. It's talking about the Son. Can't get around it. So we see that the Father did things by the Son. It pleased the Father that in him all the fullness should dwell. And for any one is person or everyone this person says that, okay. The Father is Jesus' divine nature. And in his human nature, he's the Son. Well, we know that in his human, it says the Son created all things, so something ain't right. Also, I've got a question for one of these people. If the Father is Jesus' divine nature and the Son is his human nature, 
what is the Holy Spirit? But like I said, I you know, these scriptures clearly to me prove the eternal sonship of Christ, which uh absolutely blows away the, the oneness um theology. And if you can't accept the scripture at face value and accept the scripture for what it's saying, there's no interpretation required. You don't need to interpret it, just read it. It's telling you the word of God to tell you what it's trying to say if you let it. I don't have to add anything to it. I don't have to take anything away from it. Well, I hope it was helpful and God bless you. Hope to be making more videos soon. Peace out.